You can just say something. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. I can hear you. Yep. I can hear you now. All right. Well, now we're rocking and rolling. All right. Um, and I'm here too, Ryan. Oh, they didn't cut your mic yet, Mary Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> just right. to... Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, first item of business, approve the minutes from August 12th or previous meeting. So move. Second. Motion by Mary Lynn, second by Dean. Any questions on the minutes from our previous meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Those minutes are approved. All right. 3.1, RO number 47-2021, submitting various license applications for the period ending April 14th, 2021, June 30th, 2021, June 30th, 2022, Class B liquor license new application number 3461 and 3458. Yep, so um, on these, uh, HCM Hospitality, which is the marina, they cleared up their application issues. That license should be granted. The Sol and Nova application needs to be held for another meeting yet. So okay. that would be the proper motion. Um, I would move that the Sol and Nova, I'm sorry, that the HCM Hospitality license be granted and that the Sol and Nova uh, application be held for another meeting. Second. There's been a motion by Mary Lynn and a second by Barb. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. All right, 3.2, RO number 4820-21. Director Furl submitting various license applications for the period ending April 14th, 2021. Sidewalk, cafe, and change of premise application number 3058 for House Divided. All right, so uh, we were here two weeks ago on this uh, application, and it was held uh, because the application as it then existed uh, was unable to be granted because it was not, it did not provide for a contiguous premises. Um, nothing has changed. There hasn't been any amendment uh, as was promised. Um, you know, I don't know whether there's some thought about um, whether, the, whether I know there has been some discussion about possibly making changes to the application, um, but without knowing that those changes are going to be made, we, we wouldn't be able to, to grant that. But if those changes are made, it's poten you know, potentially, depending on the circumstances, the committee could take a vote on that. Alder Donahue. Um, thank you. Um, Attorney Adams, I just think for the uh, benefit of uh, the folks who are here and the people on um, our members uh, online, can you just walk us through, number one, um, the process of the sidewalk cafe permit, and then secondly, why the change of premise application is needed and how that might be effectuated? Sure. So the sidewalk cafe permit uh, is, is just that. It's just for a sidewalk cafe. It doesn't have anything to do with... Uh, alcohol per se. Um, the sidewalk cafe in and of itself could could be granted if they weren't going to serve alcohol there. Um, that, that would be one potential change. I don't think that is one they're interested in. Uh, if they want to serve alcohol, um, there is a, you, you do have you can only serve alcohol on a licensed premise. And so the change of premise is needed in order to change the premise to expand it. Uh, so that it includes the sidewalk cafe area. Uh, because there is a requirement in the statute about contiguity, you can't, you can't have like multiple premises in multiple places. You have to have one single contiguous uh, premise. Uh, that premise has to be contiguous, and so having one at the sidewalk cafe and one in the building doesn't work. You have to include this, the space in between as well. Uh, now, there, there's a couple of issues uh, with that. Uh, one is if this is going to be a temporary, if this is going to be a permanent change, which is how it is currently um, written, uh, that uh, a, a, a permanent change that would include that area between uh, the building and the sidewalk uh, would have to get plan commission approval. And that has not, it hasn't been submitted to plan commission for approval yet at this point. 
Now there are some there are potential options, and and the last one I heard talked about was the idea that instead of going all the way out to the sidewalk, that that there was some discussion of potentially putting up tables and chairs uh, close to the building, uh, you know, sort of right up against the the building on their lot. Uh, that would not require a sidewalk cafe permit. Um, it would still require a change of premise. Um, and at least if they're gonna serve alcohol. Um, the change of premise application, if it were t a temporary change of premise, 12 days or less, does not require plan commission approval. It could be approved right here. Given that um, we're now getting into the fall and this, uh, the earliest this license could be approved, if you were to approve a license tonight, um, it would get approved by council on the day after Labor Day, September 8th, uh, that would be the the earliest that you know after that would be the earliest they could even do anything given that you know poten I, I had heard some discussion that potentially a you know one or two weekend type um, proposal where they would try it out for one or two weekends um, you know th that potentially could be you you could approve a change of premise that does that um, but the change would need to be made to the application to to indicate that it is a, a temporary change of premise uh, for, for 12 days or less um, and list the days and, um, and, that, and that it would be up against the building. Or they could, they could, they could put it on the sidewalk and, and uh, not, not serve alcohol or you know, they could put it on the sidewalk and make it you know, the, the whole area just for 12 days, you could approve that as, as, as well. Um, potentially. So if I could just continue, Chair? Yep. Um, so I'm, I'm puzzled on the contiguity issue. Um, all of the sidewalk cafes that we have approved up and down A Street um, are not contiguous to the building. Contiguous meaning attached, is that correct? No, they are all, they all, they don't get approved unless they are contiguous. They have to include a description of the of a single premises that is all contiguous. So okay. they are all contiguous. Yes. So the uh, so I'm just puzzled. So is it fair to say then that the parking lot is not part of the premise? Right. They in their application they did not include the the parking lot as part of the premise. So if you included the parking lot as part of the premise, if you included the parking lot as part of the premise. You could go all the way to the sidewalk if you wanted to. The issue there is, is that because it, if it were to be a permanent change, because they're including areas outside of the sidewalk, they would need to go to plan commission for approval. The 8th Street ones don't need that because they're, they're, basic, they're basically right up against their buildings on, on the sidewalk. So, so their, their in the statutes, right there. is there a, a specific distance requirement? There's not a distance requirement, no. It just has to be contiguous. So I'm just, I'm, you know, you and I have been through this. Um, I mean, we learned in, in law school about curtilage and <laughs> that the, the, the premise is the curtilage. It is the portion of land that is under control of the owner. So... Not I, for the... Curtilage is irrelevant to a liquor license because a, a liquor license premise has to be specifically defined. Um, the most recent case on that is the Wisconsin Dolls case, um, and it, that had to do... that. It's a slightly different situation. It's that the, the Common Council sort of unilaterally changed the application of Wisconsin Dolls to, in order to make it contiguous. Um, rather than telling them to change it uh, to make it contiguous, but that it, it does still have to be a single contiguous area. And we can't just unilaterally change it. We have, the only way we could approve a change to the application it would be contingent on them actually making the change. Which requires plan commission approval. Not, it, so that's the other issue, is we only require plan commission approval for Per, for non-temporary changes, and temporary in the zoning code is is more than twelve days. How many how many temporary permits could this bar get? Say, 
from the time that we in Wisconsin consider okay to be outside? They, they, if they're willing to pay for them, they, they could get an unlimited number of them. And how much are they? What are they, $5 each? Ten. Ten. Now, you still have to approve them. So they can, the one that's in front of you, they could amend for 12 days. And if they want more, they'd have to come back. But, um, but yeah, they, they, could, they could amend this one to be a temporary 12-day. And whether they want to include the sidewalk cafe and the area, or if they just want to be up against the property, um, that, that's really up to them. OK, so one. One permit could go for 12 days, just so I yeah. so I understand that, and that's sort and of they and they would have to state the 12 days, so it wouldn't you right. know necessarily they could pick. Right, right. I mean, they have to be one after another. They can't take like one day here, one day there, but they any 12 day period. So if they wanted to start on a Friday, so that they could get through the follow, you know, so you get through two weekends, they could do that. And in terms of the permits that are in front of us, or that have been filed, let me put it that way. At this meeting, is there a way that if the owner, who I believe is here, indicated an interest in amending the permit that's on file, could we do that here tonight? Yes, we have, we, there is precedent where we have, as long as the owner has indicated that they're they're the ones who want to make that change. We, ha we can grant those contingent on their making the change here. We can grant them contingent on them making the change. They just have to get there before it goes to council, which, you know, there's an extra week this time around, so. Okay. So I guess my, and Chair, I don't know how you want to handle this. Um, if we would allow the owner a chance maybe to discuss with Julie what this would mean concretely or answer any questions and the owner could come back into the meeting with an indication that this is what she's willing to do. Here's what I'm, I've been up and down on this Galdarn thing and as I see it now, um, the, the odd thing is, is that this bar has this gigantic, well it's not gigantic, but this very large parking lot that separates it from the sidewalk. And so I need to take Attorney Adams' analysis that this is not contiguous property. And in order to make it contiguous, in other words, joined, the owner would need to apply to the plan commission for a conditional use permit, which costs a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, and, and there's a process. Which and there's a process, through, yeah. and this bar has tried it twice before without any luck, so, you know, it's not a happy place for them. Um, and, or, so there's that possibility. And then, if that were granted, Chuck, they could have the tables and chairs outside in the parking lot. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So you wouldn't need to futz and dutz with, you know, being 20 or 30 feet away from from the building. Or, in the alternative, you could do a sidewalk cafe permit, but you just can't serve alcohol. So let me ask you this. Could a person order food from the bar and then personally go into the bar and purchase a beer and bring it out to the table? Now, just assuming that we only have a sidewalk cafe permit. Assuming we only have a sidewalk cafe permit, that would be problematic because a tavern license is primarily for consumption on premises and not for off premises. Now you can, there is a certain amount of alcohol that can be sold by a bar for off premises consumption in a sealed container. Um, you know, potentially, you know, you can take, generally that's meant you take it home or you get it in a growler or whatever. Um, the issue with the sidewalk cafe permit is you still have to have a responsible party, so you wouldn't be able to do it on the sidewalk. Now, the, then the question becomes, could they do it without, could, could they just, you know, sort of serve people inside and then people just happen to walk outside? There's a couple of problems with that. Uh, one is the potential issue of, is this really, are they really then selling for off-premises consumption in a sealed container? or not, and, and I mean, you could probably sort of squint at it and say that part, 
there's a way to do that legally. Um, you'd have to squint, but you, you could probably do that. The, the more important issue is when we've had this issue come up before, nobody, the, the insurance companies don't want to provide that kind of um, coverage because they're, they're like, well, no, we're, we're insuring you for your premises, not for the rest of your property where you don't have a, a licensed premise. So we actively discourage that um, for both of those reasons. Okay. It would be better basically for them to expand their premises. And then they know anywhere on their premises, they're responsible for it. Um, but, and, but people are going to be perfectly able to, as long as they otherwise meet the requirements of like being of age and all that, they'll, they're, it's just like being inside the bar. All right. Now, Alder Sorensen and I um, have uh, been to the bar. We've met with the owner. We've talked with Christine. Christine, who, uh, and you're currently the manager? No, I'm a cook. You're a cook. Okay. Um, but the owner's here, um, and um, the way I see it at this point, this 12-day permit has a number of advantages. One, it's cheap. Two, it's quick. Three, it gives you 12 days to figure out if this is a viable business model for you. Is this anything we really want to do? Number four, it gives you the opportunity to demonstrate to the neighbors who have expressed concerns that we have to be cognizant of as well, um, that there's noise and this, that, and the other thing. If during these, this 12-day period you show yourselves to be really good neighbors, and then you can renew it for another 20, so then you've got a month you know, before we all, you know, go back inside, you have a month to show that you're a good neighbor so that as this goes on, you get to apply for a conditional use permit without setting the neighbor's hair on fire. So I don't know what's appropriate at this point. Um, I guess I just don't see my way, I don't see my way clear of anything except this temporary extension of premises um, it has huge advantages in the sense you don't have you don't have tables way away from the bar. It's not way away, but it's farther than any place I've seen. You don't have to worry about people falling into the street. Um, you, you know, it it'd be much more pleasant, I think, to be closer to the bar because you aren't getting street traffic and so forth. So I think that there are a lot of advantages to that and that it could potentially, not right away, but potentially could be a win-win for both the bar and the neighborhood. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, we could move to hold this for another meeting, although that's two weeks from now, so, or I don't know. Three, what yeah, three weeks from now. Three weeks from now. Um, or, and I don't know how my fellow committee members feel, I would be willing to adjourn for a short, and not adjourn, but Reset. suspend our proceedings for a brief period of time for the owner to meet with Julie or Chuck or whomever just to try to get this worked out. Yeah, and really all we really need is if that's what you want to do, you got to tell us that, that that's what you're going to do, and then you should go down after the meeting and take care of it. Now, we're kind of springing this on you, but it seems to me that this that this is a way to, to go ahead. It so, seems like it's a way to go ahead, to get what you need and go forward. In other words, you can be outside, you can have tables and chairs, it can be in the parking lot, it can be for 12 days, it'll cost you $10 to get the license, which, which she's already paid. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry? Right. That's how long the permit lasts. And you can split the days up. But no, right? you can't split them up, but you can choose a beginning and an end date. Okay. And then you can get another one. So, for example, just, just so that you can understand, the, so if... If you decide to make that change and they approve it here, it still has to go to council. Council meets on Tuesday, September 8, is that correct? So the first possible day that you could start the sidewalk cafe would be Wednesday the 9th. 
12 days after that would be through the next weekend, or, or you could start out on a Thursday or whatever. But you pick which 12 days in a row that you want to do, start it you know, late enough, and then, and then go apply for another temporary permit if you want to do it later in September. You'd have to come back in for the second 12 days, though, because that still would have to get approved. And that... Yeah, and you want to do that right away because, yeah, the earliest it could get approved is the 21st of September. Okay, so now she's not on the mic, but I'm, I'm just going to sort of for the, it's not a typed record, but for the record, uh, she's indicated, uh, the owner has indicated that she is amenable and that that's what she'd like to do. To clarify, it would be a, uh, the motion then would be to uh, grant the license contingent on her uh, going over to the clerk's office and um, amending her change of premise application to do two things. First of all, to put the, the tables and chairs near the building like they've discussed. And second, to pick 12 consecutive days starting no earlier than September 9 that they would like that, uh, that to be. Well, I, I, would, I would so amend, um, but before we go into all of that, I'm just wondering, uh, Cheryl, if you need more time to talk to folks, or if you're if you if you're understanding everything that's going on, because we don't want to. I think this is a good solution, but it's much more important for you to think it's a good solution. So we. Okay. All right. So I so amend the motion. Um, there's no motion that's been made. She, so she just means she made the motion. She, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, amend yeah. the, I'm sorry, to okay. amend the, uh, the application. Um, to, was, to grant it contingent on her amending. Right. Yeah. Yep. Has made a motion to approve the application as a, um, Contingent app. upon the amendments as described. Yes. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Second by Barb. Are there any, is there any further discussion from Alders? Anyone from the public wishing to speak? Please go to the microphone though so that, so that you can be heard. And then when you go to the microphone, if you could just state your name and where you live, that'd be great. Is this a return? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Um, first of all, I'd like to say hi to Mike. Could, could, you, our, could our, you state your name though? Your Honor, Gary Bus, Gary F. Bus, 840 Mead Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, 50081. Thank you. What I'd like to say is Cheryl is in a quandary here right now. The neighbors in her neighborhood are giving her a hard time about karaoke on a Friday night. Karaoke and serving are two different things. She wants to be able to, I've done the blueprints already, she wants to attach in the front on the south side of the building tables and chairs surrounded by a fence, an appropriate fence for the situation. And this whole thing with the neighbors is causing a real big quandary here. They think that it's going to be noisy because you have people eating outside. Well, you know, Cheryl has had police come on a Friday night, which is karaoke night, called in by the neighbors that think it's too loud. Well, as it turns out, as the officer approaches the building, he says, I don't hear any noise. What, is, what, are they, what are they talking about? This is a vendetta, and it's been going on for years. It's got to stop. She's trying to make a living. She pays taxes, federal, state, local, and, of course, Social Security. She needs a break right now. She's had a, suffered a terrible loss with, the, with her husband passing, and she is a business person. So we hope that this whole thing can be resolved. Ouch. <laughs> I got a back problem here. But anyway, that's basically what we're, where I'm coming from, that you know, this has to be done. Or, you know, she goes without and wishes that she had. So I have to sit down here before I fall down. Excuse me. Okay. Okay.
Is there anyone else from the public wishing to speak? I don't know that you really need me to at this point. It sounds like we found some sort of resolution. Okay. All right. Seeing no more discussion. Um, all those in favor of approving the amended motion, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. So what you'll want to do is af after the meeting today, go down with Julie to the clerk's office and she'll help you make the changes to that. And, and, and then it'll get, it will, what will happen is it'll get approved on Tuesday the 8th. And she should, she, she knows the whole, you know, she'll be able to help you get it done. So. All right. Uh, moving along, 3.3 RO number 54, 2021, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2020, June 30th, 2022. So after review of the RO, we are recommending uh, holding the beverage operator's license application of Matthew L. Key for denial and granting all of the remaining license applications. Is there a motion to hold the aforementioned license and granting the, the remainder? So move. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair aye. Vote. aye. Chair votes aye. That's approved. Next meeting is September 16th. Seeing that we've exhausted the agenda, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. So move. Is there a second? Aye. That's okay. We'll take that as a second. Um, all those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned at 429. <coughs>